What's up guys? This is the all new Yamaha R7. What's up everyone? Welcome to the Isoclosure channel. This is our part two video of the Yamaha Day series. The first video, which will be linked in a card up top, was covering my first track day. However, this video will cover the R7 part of that track day, as well as the rollout of the new production R7. As you see, the first one in the state of Virginia right here, a beautiful all black R7 that just got put together out of the box, but we will come back to that. These are the R7s that were at the Yamaha track day event. I did get to ride this one right here. I was not able to get someone to record me riding it, but I did get some beautiful pictures from this bike. Riding it was a great experience. I know a lot of people may be curious about if a new rider could ride this or how you would feel as an experienced rider. I believe this is a perfect track bike. It was quite aggressive. I think some people may confuse the R7 based on its metrics to be a less aggressive seating position. Although it is definitely slower than the R6, it does have very aggressive ergonomics. So I don't want people to get confused about that. But this is Yamaha's attempt to make a more fuel efficient version of the R6. And I believe the R7 actually gets 55 miles per gallon. The power was not overwhelming at all, but I did accidentally downshift two times as opposed to one on the track and drag the whole back tire, which was terrifying considering, again, this is a brand new bike. At the point that I rode it in the track day, it was not even out in production yet. So I believe right now you may be able to get a few R7s, but most of them are on a wait list. As you can see, all of the bikes, there were a couple R7s, there were some R1s for testing, and there were a couple other Yamaha bikes, but I was really focused on the R7. I came to this track day event early and prepared to do whatever that I needed to do to get on this bike, and by God's grace, I did, as you can see in this picture here, and the next few pictures are me taking my track laps on the R7, and I mean, I did get to push it. I got to push it over 100 miles an hour. Like I said, I did drag the back tire, um, got some great shots in it. It felt really good. I actually enjoyed riding the R7 far more than I enjoyed riding my SB650 on the track. So in a perfect world, I probably would have started on the R7 and not the SB650, but the SB650 is a lot more relaxed, laid back, comfortable position to ride on. After my time riding the R7 on the track, which is a bit different than riding it on the street, and I haven't had that opportunity yet, I would say an R7 is doable for maybe your most advanced slash most comfortable new riders who are willing to really take your time. If you are overconfident or you are, are excessively nervous, I would suggest starting with something a little bit smaller in the cc level and definitely something less aggressive because it will take some getting used to ergonomically here you see how bikes come in to a motorcycle dealer i tried to get to this motorcycle dealer before the r7 was unpacked but as you can see as soon as it got there the technician assembled it so i did not get a picture of it in the crate this is how the bike looks when it is assembled and ready to go and I am just very grateful to FMS Frederick Motorsports, which I will link below, for giving me the opportunity to get a first look at this bike. This is actually one of the first R7s that was in production and for sale in Virginia. So it was really good to get the behind the scenes coverage of this bike. As you can see all of the angles, and this is the all black version. These are some of the technicians test riding it just to make sure it's ready to actually go to a customer. So without further ado, thank you for watching this video and I'll see you later. Peace.